Looking to reduce your energy bills? Global Eco Energy install renewable energy products to domestic, commercial, and public sector customers with a wide range of renewable energy products, including solar PV, battery storage, and air source heat pumps. We offer bespoke solutions. For a free quote and to find out more about grants and funding options, go to global-eco.co.uk and quote Solar 10 for 10% off your installation. Available until 30th September 2023. The Go Radio Football Show with Global Eco Energy. They pride themselves on honesty, integrity, quality and workmanship. Let's go! So England came to Scotland last night. A 3-1 win for the old enemy means we sent them home and we're having to think again. But the big news was, of course, at the weekend, Scotland five wins out of five on the way surely to Germany, but not quite clinching it last night because it wasn't a draw. Uh, Norway and Georgia but a lot to look forward to and with us tonight in the next two hours if you're at the game why not give us a call 0808 17 17 700 with us the Australian international star Yes, (laughs) Yes, <laughs> it's you, Craig yes. Moore is here, and uh, Scotland's top pundit, Mark Guidi. Mark, first of all, we're going to hear from Nat Phillips, that's just dropping at the moment, we'll be talking, obviously looking forward to well, Champions League and all the rest of it coming, but what's your final thoughts in Scotland then? Disappointment last night, but my goodness, up against an England with Jude Bellingham, I was there, privileged to see him. I think that, you know England have genuine world-class players, um, Paul, I don't think there's any doubt about that. And the, the the harsh reality is it was a lesson uh, for Scotland. It was an absolute lesson pretty much from start to finish. But England are a top nation. Whether we like to admit that or not, they are a top nation. And it just shows you what Scotland need to aspire to in terms of not if, when they are in Germany um, next summer for the for the Euro finals. Um, it would be good to have it officially over the line, but it is just a matter of time. But a lesson last night for sure. Do you think we were too, not the team, overly confident? The fans, or is it just natural? Five wins in the trot. Mm. Uh, we hadn't lost a, a goal, only one goal, hadn't we, from uh, competitive action yeah. in, what, six games? Yeah. Were we overly confident? I, I don't think so. But I mean, I think it was I think it's 11 wins from 12 um, qualifying yeah. in games. It's a wonderful record on a real high after the fantastic win in Cyprus, which was a tricky, ve- a tricky venue. Scotland made it look... Um, easy and it would have been nice as Steve Clark said to round it off with a, a win or even a draw last night it so happened it was a defeat Paul there's no disgrace in it bottom line is England have better players than us they're a better team than us but what we need to do in terms of competitively we are doing very very well Craig any connections with Jude Bellingham does he have any Scottish blood with oh. any of his relatives because his brother's a cracking player how good is that young man now and how good is he going to be well, I mean, what the levels that he's showing already as a, as a young man at 20 years of age is, is, is really incredible. His performances, his maturity. Uh, we seen something again last night I thought was very, very special. Um, you know, his level, his ability to, uh, to keep the ball, to make things happen, that, that ball for, for Harry Kane for the third, which obviously is the final nail in the coffin. It was just an absolute all-round uh, master, masterful performance. From Bellingham, um, he had great support. Let me tell you as well. There were some some good performances in the English side. Also, Scotland. It was a big test, no doubt about that. Uh, with a lot of confidence in recent games, but that's what you want to be tested against. And you'll be up against them soon, won't you, for Australia? Mark, you were going to say? I'm just going to say, how was your night last night? Oh, uh, magnificent. You? Yeah, yeah, thank you. Yeah. Was yeah. In, uh, enjoyed it. Was it? Uh, they were all they were all there. It was yeah. loads of them. <laughs> uh, Mark Haitley and Alex McLeish came in. You know mm-hmm. the two internationals, obviously former Rangers stars, also former England striker and the Scotland manager as he was. Alex McLeish, who started a lot of the the players who, well, Scott McTominay, for example, I think yeah. he had tracked him down. Scottish connections, so he was there. Lots in there. Brendan Rogers was there as well. So Going. yeah, Theo Pafitis. Yeah. Oh, the old Millwall. Yeah. Ah, it was brilliant. Yeah, yeah, he was brilliant yeah. from the Apprentice. Dragon's Den. Yeah, indeed. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, Dragon's Den. Oh, one of my Dragon's favourite old games. Yeah. Yeah. I like. It's a top. Uh, I like Dragon's Den. There was lots there. It, like it, was, it was a big, big night because 150 years since the first international ever, which was Scotland against England. But mm-hmm. you could just see the difference, Mark. So I guess the thing is not to get, not to get down about it. Oh, there's no disgrace to in it. No. Sure. I mean, you're Jude Bellingham, mm. Marcus Rashford, Phil Harry Foden. Kane, Phil Foden. 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 Good as well. You know, you look at the bench, even four or five guys that, mm. that, that aren't in the squad. That, that, like, it's unfortunate they're at a different level from us. But again, it shows you the performance that the Scotland team put in at Wembley a couple of years ago at the Euros to get that 0-0 draw and actually bossed huge, huge chunks of the game 
um, had it not been for Jordan Pinkford uh, we would have won that night but um, Paul we're making great progress as a nation last night was unfortunate but in the grand sc- <coughs> excuse me in the grand scheme of things it doesn't matter Friday night was the most important game when we got the job done spot on spot on when you're, when you're competitive matches which is exactly what Scotland have done um, the friendlies I mean it's hard to say Scotland England is no. a friendly but that's, Challenge that's, that's, match. Yeah, yeah but it's the opportunity yeah. Paul to, to see what other, other people are capable of um, and, and there's no points at stake apart from pride so certainly Scotland heading in the right direction there's no doubt about that Who's the best player you've ever seen have a think about it is it Kenny Dalglish perhaps Sir Kenny um, Craig for you so have a think Jude Bellingham, how good can he be? I heard someone today saying he could be the new Zidane. Now that would be well, he uh, was a number five, special, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. He's, uh, and I think we'd go to with Paul Lambert in here a couple of weeks ago talking yeah. about Jude Bellingham. Yeah, Paul's got a, a, him, a good yeah relationship yeah. in terms of the, the Dortmund thing, and then keeping in touch. And Paul said, you know, and I think we could all see that, you know, I mean, a real top operator on the park. I mean, he must be in the top ten players in the world now, Already. even at twenty twenty one, but off the park. Even look at his presser when he's paraded at Real Madrid. He is so mature and speaks so well. Um, he's an absolute credit to the game, to Real Madrid, to England, to his family, um, to himself. Uh, he's he's some player. It'd be, it'd be wonderful if somebody like him. We're not letting the old firm go just yet. That game a couple of weeks ago now, it goes on and on. Mark, we mm. haven't seen you. Uh, Craig and I were on last week I want to ask you what you think of it and what it's going to mean in the restart now because Michael Beale clearly the Rangers fans went there with great expectations up yeah. against a weakened Celtic team mm-hmm. and it was Celtic who took the spoils yeah and Celtic over the piece I think deserve to win the game there's also the, the contra- controversial um, incident with the with the, the free kick award on uh, uh, Laga Bielka um, I but over the piece uh, Paul you know I think it's um, the alarm bells must be ringing for Rangers, for the hierarchy, for the management and certainly for the supporters, if a Rangers team at home in front of 50,000 couldn't take care of that weakened Celtic team. Celtic were there for the taking that day. Rangers couldn't manage it. Credit to Brendan Rodgers and his players. What a finish by Kyogo Furuhashi. I mean, absolutely sensational. Um, You know, he beat somebody of, of Butland's quality as well. Totally took Butland by surprise, taking it so early. A beautiful finish. But again, just it goes to show you as well, Paul, um, you, the, the experience in the dugouts. That's when Brendan Rodgers shows that he's a top man. That's why I've always said he's an upgrade in Ange Postecoglou. Brendan Rodgers has been there, seen it and done it. You talk about a manager with around about 600 top, top games against a manager with 60 games. That can be a big, big difference. So Michael Beale now, there's uh, a lot of pressure on him to deliver. I think he's running out of time um, and I can't see him turning it around. I think um, what's happened um, 10 days ago uh, spells the beginning of the end for Michael Bailey's his reign as, for, uh, as Rangers manager. That's how I see it panning out over the next few weeks. Come you, you don't think he will find his best team and be able to turn it around in the next few months? I don't think so, Paul. I'd be, I'd be very, very surprised because once again, the be-all and end-all mm-hmm is about beating Brendan Rodgers' Celtic team over 38 games. Now, the League Cup is there for the taking, mm-hmm. but it's not enough now, Paul. No. It's about, you know, not getting to the Champions. As I've said many times, Giovanni Van Bronckhorst was sacked. He got him a Europa League final, won them a Scottish Cup, got him into the Champions League and brought in 40 million in transfer fees. So Michael Beale's well behind what Giovanni Van Bronckhorst has, has achieved. And once again, a fantastic opportunity to go and beat Celtic and he couldn't do it. When it matters, that's four or five attempts now. You can't survive as a Rangers man unless Rangers are willing to settle for second best for the next couple of years to the build something. I don't think that should be the case. I don't think it is the case. So therefore, I don't see how you, you, you can allow that to continue to happen with the same manager. Craig, you know exactly what they think at, at Rangers. You were with the club so long, mm-hmm. two successful spells. What would you say to that? Would you settle for second best? No, absolutely not. And I don't think there'll be anybody within the football club that um, will, will take that um, that line, so to speak. Um, that's interesting. I mean, you know, Mark speaks a lot of sense um, most times. No, and he did again there in terms of and the experience that you touch on, Mark. I mean, it is huge. And it, in, in, in that particular match, the last old firm match, when really Rangers had... The odds were stacked in Rangers' favour. There's no doubt about that. You know, you're at home... Um, you're virtually at your strongest, and you're up against, um, you know, Celtic, who, you know, 
are, are virtually at their weakest and what are unable to get the results. So the experience factor certainly play, played a role there. In terms of um, you know finishing second and, and that being accepted at Rangers, Paul, that will never, ever be the, be the case. You've got to be in there swinging. You've got to be in there trying to win. And if um, that situation doesn't look likely or doesn't look as if that's the wheels are in motion kind of thing, then Rangers will... Um, you know, do what needs to be done. Michael Beale is in a really, really tough situation at the moment because I have said um, I believe he needs a perfect run uh, in terms of, you know, not dropping points, getting to, you know, Christmas and, and, and having won the, the League Cup final. Absolutely no yeah. doubt. Any any dips, any drops between here and then, and I can't see any other solution than him being out the door. All right. We'll come back to that shortly. If you have a view, give us a call. 0808 17 17 700. Paul Cooney with Mark Guidi. And Craig Moore. Uh, Reagan's on the line, a huge Scotland fan. Hi, Reagan. Paul, it's good to be on. Thank you for having me. Great to hear you. What did you make of it last night? Uh, I thought England were just a better team, Paul. Simple as that. Yeah. Um, I thought Jude Billing was fantastic to watch. I thought Rashford was good. But I felt for I felt I felt for the very first time in about two years. I thought we got over overawed by the the magnitude of the of the match, I thought that even though England were really good first half, yeah. I felt it was very it was very difficult for us to, to get a hold of the ball. Yeah. Paul, would, I thought that was the first kind of uh, time when I've seen us no have much um, uh, confidence on the ball. Yeah. But I think what Steve Parks did in, though, Paul, um, I thought the second half they, they did in really well. Yeah. I thought uh, Big and Dykes on made a big difference um, in the second half. I thought over. I think what, what, what she was Steve Clark said in his press conference last night mm-hmm. in terms of um, seeing the progression in the squad and um, obviously we've got the fifteen points out of fifteen. Yeah. But I think um, obviously people were like to hear it, but it was only our friendly last mm-hmm. night. But so I think over. I think I feel a Scotland fan. You just said to me, with the 15 points out of 15, yeah. and we be, be on the road to Germany and be outclassed by the better team, you'd probably have to say you'd have, to, you'd have definitely took that ball. And I think most people would agree with you. Let's hear from Stevie Clark. This is what he said afterwards, after the defeat. We didn't play as well as we can play. England played very well, I thought, especially the first half. Uh, they got the 2-0 lead, makes it difficult to come back. Decent response in the second half from us, I thought. Decent response. We had a good 30 minutes where we were f- trying to force the game to get back in. We got back in on 2-1, uh, switch off again, and the game goes 3-1, it's, it's over. But I'm not sure I was the one getting carried away too much. Uh, I said the game would be something that I could look at afterwards. Uh, I had some things I wanted to see tonight before we go to Spain next month for the competitive game. And I'll go away, I'll, an- I'll analyse the game and I'll see what we can do better. And Gareth Southgate was asked about the difference in levels between the two teams. Look, we played exceptionally well. And um, I, th- I think we, uh, we were able to nullify a lot of the threats that Scotland pose. Um, so yeah, tonight was a was a really good performance from us. Um, I think S- Scottish fans should be really proud of how their team are going and the job Steve's doing. You know, uh, I'm sure there'll be a huge reaction to tonight's result, but we've just had that for three days. I'm sure Steve's sensible enough to, you know, keep calm about that. He, he, um, we, we played well tonight. We've won the game, but on another night that can look very different. Mark, you're smiling there, a wry smile, because, of yeah. course, they did get pelters after the yeah. the draw with Ukraine. You know, Paul, I, I really like Gareth yeah. Southgate. I love listening to him. Um, and I think he's been a brilliant England manager. You know, a penalty kick away from winning the Euros yeah. a couple of years ago, semi-finals of the World Cup. Um, a disappointment. Um, uh, the last World Cup there, six, uh, nine months ago. Um, he's, a, he's a really good manager. And... Um, I think the the stick that he gets, the criticism that he gets down the road, is unjustified, and he, and he speaks very well there of Scotland, very respectful towards uh, our players and and towards um, Steve Clark um, as well, and not in a patronising way. You know, mm-hmm. I think in a genuine way, you know, there's a big big difference. Um, and I think Gary Southgate, as, as I say, no matter what topic you throw at him, I've heard him been interviewed many times. We're all pal Jim White and Talksport as well, and he speaks so so well. You know, he'll tackle anything. 
uh, head on and I thought his defence of, of Harry Maguire last night was absolutely exceptional yeah. as well for yeah. a manager to come out and back his player like that because you know sometimes you know we, we you take it for granted criticism is part of the game of course it is um, but sometimes it can go over both isn't it strange though and, I, and I'm I'm like you in terms of his loyalty that he shows to his players, and in particular, Harry Maguire. Um, no player deserves to, to get the criticism that he's had, not just now, but it's been yeah. two years. It really has been, yeah. been two years. But I actually think that there's going to be a time that the loyalty will actually cost Southgate as well, his job. You think? Uh, yeah, I yeah. do. I do think so, because, again, if it doesn't, if it doesn't provide a trophy at some stage, then um, I'm, I'm sure. But, again, if that was the case... He will be totally at ease with that because he's gone about his business in a professional way, in an honest way, um, and, and for me, that's the way you need to. But I actually think it will cost him eventually further down the line, potentially his job. He was critical more of, I think, the English media for the way fans react to Harry Maguire. We all know he was dropped by Man United, lost yeah. the captaincy. He got a bit of stick in England games, didn't he, last season? Yeah. And he said, you know, I don't blame away fans. They were giving it a kind of, oh, every time he was on the ball. Mm -hmm. um, do you feel sorry for him in a case like that? I know what happens Harry in Maguire. these games. Yeah. Ah, yeah. It's a human being, you know. Yeah. It's not naive. He's got family watching the game, you know. It's not nice. I say, you know, sometimes you can have a bad game, you get criticised, yeah. fine, you get a couple of boos, but, but, but when it's relentless like that and it's, you know, it goes beyond actually, you know, just having a bad touch or a bad yeah. pass or a bad tackle, it's it's not nice. And, and as I say, that's been ongoing now uh, for a couple of years. Reagan, how did you feel on that? And the manager, he was having a go at the English media. It's probably the English fans that started it, Man United and then England, but what did you feel? I think it's been very difficult for him. Obviously, get dropped for uh, ten hags. Yeah. Uh, put a different person in charge of Man U as well. So I think it's been a very difficult time for him. I think sometimes um, football fans can be a bit like that. But no, I, I think he's a very good player. I mean, like you guys have said, he, go, he got England to the U to the European Championship final um, in the world. Yeah. So, so close to winning it. So he's He's not a bad player. Sure. And I think I think one of the big things that for, for the ball was the price tag they went for. He, he's the most expensive uh, player uh, defender. That's true. When he, when he left Brendan Rodgers um, two years ago. So I think, see when you put all that, um, I, think it, I think it's a, a difficult one for him to do. To deal with. Sure. Regan, did you have the new retro top last night, the Scotland top, which is magnificent? I did. Yeah. I did, Paul. It's a belt up. Um, Looked good. Some of them tried to get it yesterday, but it was sold out. So, And are you swapping it for your Celtic top at the weekend? Your manager, Brendan Rodgers, was there last night uh, at the game. And uh, well, what a job he did for you the other week. The 1-0 win I, at I Rangers. Mean, um, I definitely wasn't expecting it, Paul. I thought Rangers were probably going to win the game just because of the... Like the guys were saying there, we all the, the crisis. And Celtic way, uh, Vickers no being there, we, we, uh, we uh, no being there. Sure. So I think it, I think in terms of that, that that'll be a big shot in the arm for Brendan that he's got that that that, that three points, and hopefully he can build on it. This this Saturday at Celtic Park. Yep, Celtic against Dundee. We'll quickly turn to the weekend and St. Johnson against Rangers. Reagan, thanks so much for calling in tonight. 08, 08, 17, 17, 700. It's been quite an international break though, isn't it? You've been missing the domestic scene, Craig. Oh, no, very much so. I mean, look, inter international football is there, um, but the domestic stuff, um, and certainly for Rangers in particular, yeah. this, this break would have felt like two months, not two weeks. Yeah, yeah. Uh, desperate for the next game but look we love the domestic side of it as well Paul sure. can't wait yep. for it to kick off again this weekend the hot ticket really is it's at uh, Perth isn't it the 12.30 mm -hmm. kick off early kick off mm -hmm. St Johnson against Rangers you can't really overstress how important this game is for Michael Beale and for Rangers because they did spend 13, 14 million during the summer mm -hmm. there was a lot of talk about that and the Rangers fans were part of it they were really confident about the Danilos yeah. Deserts yeah. 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 yeah big wage yeah. bill as well. yeah. a lot of big contracts yeah. being indeed um, been handed out um, and the transfer. So look, the Rangers hierarchy have backed the manager um, well and it's up to Michael Beal to, to, to find the solution because there's obvious problems there at the moment and it's him as, as manager, head coach, to find the solutions, very much his team and he needs to do it. But I mean, I think you're almost at a stage now and Craig says he needs a perfect run between now and maybe December the 30th until they play Celtic again. And it's probably hard to argue that domestically. 
because um, you'd get the feeling if, if Rangers dropped any points on Saturday I don't know how Michael Beale survives yeah look if, if, if that happened this weekend um, then, then I, I can't see at this moment in time with the swell that there is against uh, if there was any drop points this weekend Mark then I, I can't imagine that come Monday morning that Michael Beale would, would be at Rangers Rangers fans, what are you thinking? 0808 17 17 700. The Go Radio Football Show with Global Eco Energy. They pride themselves on honesty, integrity, quality and workmanship. Let's go! The most important thing in this camp was to get three points in Cyprus. We achieved that. Playing against England is going to be difficult. Playing against Spain away is going to be difficult. Playing against France away is going to be difficult. But if you want to learn as a team, you have to play against good opposition. So we have to go away and learn the lessons from tonight and try to be better in the future. Yep, Scotland beaten 3-1 by England last night, but no disgrace, that's the view, I think, of just about everyone, certainly with Mark Guidi and Craig Moore as well. It's not often that Andy Robertson has to apologise about uh, a missed um, place ball. It's just so unlike him. Uh, the manager spoke about England's pressing, they were so good, but Mark, it, it's unlike him, but it can happen to everyone, isn't it? 66 caps, he's hardly put a foot wrong. Yeah, listen, if, if he makes one mistake every 20 caps, then I think... Um, yeah. You know, we'll all we'll all be fine um, with that. It's just one of those uh, moments, and again, it shows you the, the the quality of the opposition. You know, you can't hand uh, England uh, gift wrapped uh, chances when, when guys like Rashford and Bellingham and Foden, uh, all those boys um, are around. But Paul, again, just to re- reiterate the point, it was all about Friday night. Last night would have been a nice wee bonus. Of course, it would have been to beat England, or certainly not to lose to England at Hamden on the hundred and fiftieth anniversary, but. You know the position that we're in in terms of the section. You know, beating England isn't going to get us to Germany. Mm-hmm. So what we've managed to do in the previous five competitive games is all that matters. And now it's just a case of just trying to get that one win um, to get us uh, over the line. It actually, it's funny because the mistake that he makes is actually the mistake of a very, very confident player. And the reason why I say that is because normally when you're not playing football in your in your six yard box, eighteen yard box, he's still looking to play a pass. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's such a confidence. Okay, you get punished. Um, but a player that w- w- wouldn't have that confidence. You can always analyse a goal and find fault. And he's shelling uh, at 50 uh, yards. England, Gareth will, will look at the goals and say they've, they've created some really good goals. Uh, obviously, one or two small mistakes on our side that I think we can defend better. I think we have defended better by and large. Uh, tonight, we didn't defend as well as we could do. So, yeah, something to improve. Yep. Stevie, jump in on that one. Craig, you're right. it can happen. Of course it can. Have we got world-class players? That's maybe not a fair comparison. I don't know if there's world-class players, but there's some terrific... We've got a really strong squad, but we're up against three, yeah. a team with... I mean, they are probably going to win a major. They could well win the Euros next year. I mean, um, I don't think we have got world-class players, Paul. You know, when you think of Doug Leishes and Sunnises and, and Laws and all those kind of guys. What we do have is the best Scotland team... And what, I mean, what, what can we say, Paul? The best Scotland team since we qualified for France '98 is that fair? Oh, for sure. Yeah, Absolutely. so we've got the best yeah. Scotland team in 25 mm-hmm. years, yeah. which is a big, big compliment. Compliment yeah. to Steve. Um, you know, you, you mentioned Alan McLeish at the top of the program. You look yeah. at some of the guys that Alex brought into the, the setup: Scott McTominay's, John McGinn's. But <clears throat> in international terms, they were babies. Look at them now. Look at the progress in the past um, four or five years. So uh, credit. Uh, to Steve Clark and to the players turning it on week in week out in the Premiership down the road they're up here at Celtic they're at Rangers Champions League level etc etc so we're, we're in a really good place and by the way it doesn't matter to us whether we've got world class players or not as long as they're giving their all mm-hmm. and doing what they're doing and they've been doing that for a few years now and good luck to them there was something in here people like Ryan Porteous why did this, one of the Scottish teams not pick him up you know Rangers or what about your old team Rangers should they have gone in for him um, <sighs> Again, they're, 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 I think you know Porteous is one of probably a, f- a few in the last couple yeah. of years, Paul, that both Rangers and Celtic have probably ignored in terms of the domestic scene. Mm-hmm. I think it has been overlooked. Yeah. Uh, there's no doubt about that. You look at Doig, you look at Ferguson. You look at Lewis uh, Ferguson, came at, on last night. You look at Shanklin now currently. Mm-hmm. Um, and probably at the start of the season, you know, I, I was still doubting whether Shanklin could play for one of the, the, the top two. But I think what he's shown this season is, yes, I believe he can. Mm. Mark, what do you feel? Oh, uh, just in the specific question you asked about Ryan Portis yeah. a year ago when he left for, for Watford, I wouldn't have signed him, Paul. I had a lot of doubts about Ryan Portis. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think there was something there, but 
He was a bit impetuous for me, and just you know, and I think mm, no, he had no, a red card in him. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I wouldn't have. Um, looking at him now, of course, all day long. So what do I know? Um, but um, he's mature. No, but back the then, dropped. Yeah, yeah, back then, back then a year ago, I'd have said no. A, a Lewis Ferguson and a launch the Shankland. Yeah, all day long. A John McGinn, of course, you know, four or five years ago when he could have gone to, to Celtic. So those kind of guys, but, but poor taste, give him credit. Credit where it's due. I think he really has matured and, and focuses more on being a defender and being a footballer. Because for me, he paid too much attention but try to play to the crowd and try to get involved with referees and unnecessarily get involved with opposition strikers, but it was cost himself yellow, sometimes red cards. But he, he's matured. Yeah, no, very much so. I think he's got to the stage now where he understands that that kind of behaviour not only uh, punishes himself but his teammates. Yeah. Um, and you can't get away with that and survive uh, in the game today. So he looks as if he's definitely matured. Uh, a really good addition to the Scottish national team. What did you make of two players that I think did impress for Scotland as they normally have done, especially Callum McGregor and also Billy Gilmer last night? Yeah. Both did well. Yeah, I mean, I mean Gilmer's starting to really get involved under De Zerbe um, now um, at Brighton, which is a great thing because I, I think, you know, if you're a football player um, and from the outside looking in at what you see De, De Zerbe's managed to do at Brighton in, in less than a year, it's quite exceptional. Um, Paul, in terms of the coaches down the road and managers, you know, De Zerbe's a talk of the steamy um, down there in terms of, you know, what he's done. Um, so that can only be good for, for Billy Gill when you can see him you know, getting to grips with that great to see him back in the dark blue jersey and doing it so well and for Callum McGregor um, he bossed uh, the old thumb game pretty much when he needed to he bossed it showed fantastic leadership um, and uh, right at the right time because I think he's had a few critics this season people said he's not getting to grips with Brendan's gate or the way Brendan wants him to play etc etc but when it mattered Callum McGregor stepped up yeah, he, he, both, both very, very good players. Um, and, and, you know, McGregor's story is a little bit different because he has been so influential at club and country in, in recent times. Billy Gilmore, you look at the, the battle that he's had in the last six or 12 months in terms of actually trying to get playing for his club yeah. uh, and, and getting that situation under wraps. And all of a sudden, you know, it can turn, it can turn very, very quickly. But behind the scenes, the work, the, the dedication, the, mate, he would have had so many no's. You're not playing this weekend, you're not playing. And it's easy. To say, oh, okay, well, this is just not going to happen for me. Resilient, great mentality, brilliant to see. Steve Clark was asked afterwards, any takeaways from the game? The response. Uh, when we managed to get our foot on the ball, we managed to pl play the ball around a little bit. We looked a little bit more like we're all selves, but you have to recognise the fact that the game was probably already gone at 2-0 down. So there were some good things. There were some things we're going to, we're going to have to be better at. Uh, and that's our job. The players go away to their clubs now, so I've got a little bit of time where I can analyse the game, sit down and try and come up with a, a strategy and hopefully we get a performance in Spain. And talking of players coming through, he was with the under-21s, uh, Ben Doak. Uh, how good is he going to be the Liverpool player? So Nat Phillips on loan from Liverpool with Celtic. We're going to hear from him, but first let's hear him speak about Doak. From what I've seen from Doakey so far... Um, I think plenty of people have got every reason to be excited about him. He's very confident. You know, some, sometimes young boys come up with the first team and they might play within themselves a bit. And that's not been the case with him. He's electric when he's running at players. He's happy to run at anyone. I think, you know, if he continues to progress the way he's doing, then um, he'll do well. How good do you think he's going to be? I mean, just a, a wee bit of insight. I mean, Jackie yeah. McNamara is Ben Doak's agent. And, and Jackie, you know, Jackie doesn't rave about people unless they deserve it you know Jackie's uh, reserved when they want to put pressure on his his clients but certainly he thinks that, that he's a real deal and as you know I'll do Kenny Douglas has him with him Paul and Kenny Douglas has watched Ben Doak many times both playing the Champions League sort of youth games and then coming into the, the first team getting off the bench a few times starting a couple of games and um, you know if Kenny Douglas gives you the seal of approval uh, which he has very excited about his his talent and then there's no doubt um, that, that Ben Doak has got a, a big future in the game at the highest level. He's at, he's at the right club, you know what I mean? Because he's just a player that, uh, you know, that wide player, attacking player, wants to get at people. You need to be at a club that's going to allow those kind of scenarios to happen. So he's at the perfect the perfect club. Um, and tell you what, I've never seen anything quicker in recent time, honestly. Really? Absolute yeah. flying machine. Well, I think... Ben Dock will be in the Scotland squad at the Euros next summer. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Prediction? yeah. I think yeah, yeah. Ben Dock will be part yeah. of the main squad at the Euros next summer. I'll say that 
hundred percent he'll be in the squad. Charity bet coming on. Yeah, no, I, 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 yeah. I wouldn't be challenging that no. bet. I, I, I see that that's very realistic for the player. I was looking for Sir Kenny last night. I didn't see him. It would have been lovely to have the most capped player ever and our joint top scorer along with Dennis Law. It was that kind of night, Mark. There were so many faces there. It was great to see them. Um, I don't think Kenny was there. I, I don't think he was at the game, though. No, I don't know if he did, did something else um, um, on or whatever, yeah. uh, Paul, but no doubt he'd have been supporting oh, yeah. um, Scotland for sure. He loved I mean, He's lived in England um, for, for yeah. what, 45 uh, years, but he loves nothing. Nothing better sure. than than, than uh, Scotland um, beating England for sure. Because you saw lots of goals, you know, on the screens of the, in the past, and some of the great goals that he scored uh, over the years. We hadn't beaten England there, had we, since the Richard Goff goal in '85, I think it was the Rouse Cup. Yeah, I remember at the end yeah. of the season, just getting ready yeah. for the full time, and he scored. And he won. Shelton, wasn't yeah, it? that's right. Yeah, yeah. 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 down doing the interview. Yeah, yeah. At full time. It's too long, isn't it? Uh, since, TV since we beat them here and that one maybe in another radio station <laughs> <laughs> somewhere along the river but uh, yeah, yeah face for radio yeah. oh, you remember those years yeah. oh. uh, so what are you thinking Scotland fans it was great to hear from Reagan there 08 08 17 17 700 a few people did say to me Craig when I came in is Barry with you is Barry going to be here the internet sensation it, is Barry he always was absolutely huge leader. but uh, steady oh, well, there's well, no way honestly to be fair I a bit of a chuckle with it as well. Yeah. Um, the first time I seen him after, <laughs> and I mentioned it, I just got a Was big, I got a big smile. This, I got a big smile from Derek's goal. No, uh, no, no. What we're talking about? It was, it was, it was oh, a Derek's goal. goal. I, I, I thought I, you meant Derek Ferguson, his <laughs> brother. Maybe it was. No, I got a chuckle. Paul. Exactly. I got a smile. From <laughs> and of course, working with him, you know that he says what he thinks. Aye. Oh, and, you know, he'll sure. praise the, the Celtic and he'll praise Rangers oh, or whatever. But he gives it as he's an honest pundit. Sure, he's an honest pundit. A few people were asking, "Is Barry here?" A few of them were there. I think some of the Celtic fans as well around some of the, the Rangers fans uh, yeah there was a lot to chew on last night but quickly it'll turn back to domestic scene and we'll get a champ- Champions League weekend, coming up Paul, yeah. well, of course and then next before that and, yeah. and Europa, Europa League but, uh, yeah. it's a massive I mean honestly I think Craig and I have touched on it yeah. Saturday is absolutely massive for Michael Beale as the Rangers manager needs to win the game quite a few people on the yeah. socials asking um is it going to work now for Michael Beale? But they must have seen something there. QPR saw him. They took him from Villa, where he was number two, one of the number twos, along with Stephen Gerrard. Then he went to QPR, and then after what twenty games, he came back to Rangers, and they've yep. invested in him. They have, they have. They've, uh, and again, it's kind of, I guess, at times, depending on what you're hearing and where you're hearing it from, the amount of spent. Um, but look, he's he's been given the opportunity to to certainly go out and splash some kind of cash, and you know that's. Brought him in nine players uh, that, um, you know, he would have liked, and I'm pretty sure Michael would have liked to have seen players settle a little bit quicker, especially when they've come in early part of the transfer window, yeah. Mark. You know, yeah. so I think that they, you'd expect and you'd want players to be hitting the ground running a lot quicker than what they have. But, but you know, he doesn't help himself. You see, you listen to some of his pressers and some of the things that he said, not just recently over the piece, and I'll give you a, a classic example where he doesn't help himself. The signs of Fuentes... The ball accounts a fantastic player, run about a million quid, whatever the fee is to get to get him early from Los Angeles, which is great, get him in the door four or five months um, sooner than, than expected. And his main quote of the day is Sifuentes will take us to another level. Yeah. Two biggest games of the season so far, PSV away, Celtic at home, he's no playing, he's no starting the game. So you don't make those statements. Yeah. You know, don't make those statements because you're setting yourself up for a fall and it's not fair either than a guy coming out and say yeah. he'll take us to another level so what is another level well clearly another level is getting us past PSV or mm-hmm. beating Celtic in a game that matters yeah. and the guy doesn't start either game so mm-hmm. that's where Michael Beale does not help himself with these comments but that happened also last season if you cash your mind back uh, when uh, Raskin and Cantwell come in mm-hmm. and then he didn't play uh, yeah, right. both players yeah. Yeah. like so you're, I mean unfortunately he's in a position now where he has he's brought in a lot of players he has spoken to the media a number of occasions, given out a lot of information. Mm-hmm. Therefore, you, it's out there. You have to back that up and you have yeah. to go and win games of football. And that, at the moment, at this moment in time, is what's you know, holding him back and the, and the club back for the pressure that they're under. 
is going to unfold over the next few... You, you've thrown this one in, Mark. There's quite a few people coming on. Uh, they're also asking about Harvey Barnes. Would you have him for Oof. Scotland? All day, yeah, long. All day long. No oh, problem. Yeah, yeah. What a talent he is. No problem. That's Stuart has been on and saying also, what do you think um, about Elliot Anderson? So, you know, we, we wondered he's last week... He's clearly having second thoughts, is, isn't he? Yeah, no, he's having I, second we just heard he'd pulled out of training and that can happen, but we kind of wondered as we were what? on air at the time and it seems to be... I thought, no, yeah. surely not. But... Mm. It seems as if there potentially is something there. Yeah, but then he needs to be careful because, you know, um, you can't just pick and choose when you want to play for Scotland or be a part of it. So he's either all in or nothing. I think he'll need to make his, up, make his mind up quickly because a big part of the success we've had under Steve Clark is the, toge the, the togetherness yeah, yes. in the camp. And if somebody might come in and potentially upset that, I think he's a really big time Go on. in the last two minutes. Yeah bit more from Gareth Southgate speaking about Scotland. I think it was difficult for them to press us because um, the shape that we played tonight is slightly different and um, we could get numbers low to control and, and calm the game but then when they jumped we were able to get through the lines and we had a real threat. You know, their system could, could have caused us problems as well and, and it's that cat and mouse. But our, our players played with real composure and a great focus. The Go Radio Football Show with Global Eco Energy. For the best customer service, call 0800 233 5788. Let's go! Thanks, Chris, for the traffic and travel this time. Last night, night was getting into Hamden, getting out of Hamden, I have to tell you. Everyone who's been there knows it's uh, not a doddle, is it? No, it's one of <laughs> yeah. the worst in, in Scotland. It's difficult yeah, to get away. It puts away. a lot of people yeah. off going to act. Yeah. I know a lot of people that get put off actually going to Hamden because of the, the chaos at, uh, at full time, but it must have been a, a wonderful occasion Paul to have, have, have been there in the, in the boxes it last was. night and enjoying it especially on the back of the five wins I mean can you believe that we've got 15 points no, Mark I can't no, yeah. genuinely yeah. genuinely can't I genuinely can't and just that just that last wee wee hurdle we'll get there I don't know you know my goodness can you imagine if it comes down to a shootout Scotland Norway on what November the 18th or 19th whatever it is oh it happened in the last game oh my god surely not Craig it's not no, going to come to that it's yeah. the Hyman House Hi, and hi's, but you want to keep momentum going, that's yep. for sure. Sure, do. 08, 08, 17, 17, 700. Rangers legend Craig Moore is here, and the legend that is Mark Guidi. <laughs> uh, we're looking forward to the games this weekend. This is an unusual weekend because we've got um, all the games in Premiership oh, are on. St yeah. Johnson Rangers, 12.30 kickoff. Then 3 o'clock, Celtic against Dundee, Hearts against Aberdeen, Kilmarnock against Hibernian, Motherwell, St Mirren, Ross County against Livingston. There's something in every single yeah. game. You know, we've got a new manager at Hibs, for example. Craig, what do you make of him? You know him well. I know he's not an Australian, mm -hmm. but he's come via Oz. I hope he does well. Um, he's done a very good job at Central Coast Mariners in Australia. Mm -hmm. uh, he comes with, I think, maybe two other staff members. Um, so, yeah, no, good luck to him. Look, it's important, I think, for, for any manager uh, when, they, when they come in to, to do well. But I guess for me, seeing him people come over from Australia and do well uh, is, is, is also uh, it's good for me like I said I think it just shows that the translation of the leagues is not a million miles away whether it be players that we've seen now and there's a number of Aussies obviously here in the, in the, the Scottish leagues but also the, the coaches are, are quite capable as well The Ange Postacoglu effect Mark has that played a part in this appointment of Nick Montgomery? I, I, I think so yeah it certainly would have yeah, it certainly again opened Opened um, our eyes in this country to what is over um, in Australia. We've always known there's been good good players. For example, Craig's been here. Mark Vaduka has been here. Um, Scott McDonald. Uh, Scott Scott McDonald Mac, yeah. You know, so that there, there's there's been a, a number of players um, over the years. Kevin um, Muscat has yep. uh, been here. Aaron Moy. You know, so there's been Tom, a few. Tom Rogic went all right. Tom Rogic, we uh, forgot, we forgot. Uh, that. Uh, so Tom Rogic as well. So you, so you look at that. Hearts have brought in. Um, Kyle Rolls, I think, has been, been doing Rose well. So, Devlin. Yeah, Cammy Devlin. So, there's a few. So, now, you know, you, you've got Nick Montgomery going in. I'm going to go to Rugby Park on Saturday, looking forward to it. Hibbs on the back of a really good result at Pitodji, um against Aberdeen. I think it was the right decision to part company um, with Lee Johnson. I think it was required just to freshen it up and, you know, get the players going again. And um be interesting to see how he does because you look at the the Hibs squad, Paul, you look at the budget, you know, and, and, and the Gordon family have certainly backed uh, Lee Johnson in the past couple of years. Um, Hibs should be, you know, top five comfortably, comfortably top five. 
Lee Johnson has said he thinks he should have been given more time. The European schedule took it out of the players and he blamed that for the poor domestic form. I suspect I know your answer on that one. Well, I've got one. I, I think yeah. it, was a, it, was a, it was a long time coming, right. um, his, um, his removal um, as manager, and you need to be able to handle that. You know, that that's a lame excuse for, for me. Yeah, to, to blame the schedule that is based on the success you're trying to achieve at the football club. It uh, doesn't make a, a lot of sense, does it, really? Um, and he's, fall, he's fallen into another job pretty quickly, hasn't he? He's at Fleetwood. Yeah, yeah. Fleetwood, Fleetwood Town. Yeah. Yeah, Scott, so, Scott so Brown goes out one door, Lee Johnson comes in the other. But it was time. It was time, it was time to go. Hibs, I agree. I think they've got a, I think they've got a good squad um, and, and definitely top four, top five. They should be there. Mark, were you surprised about Scott Brown? He did a great job for them last season, didn't he? He did a great cup run. He did, they had them yeah. mid-table. I know yeah. that they had a terrible start for the season, but it was still early, no? It was, yeah. I mean, it wasn't a good start uh, at all. And I suppose if you're Fleetwood and you're looking at it, it's not an acceptable start by any stretch of the imagination. And, and Scott would know that himself. But, but Paul, unfortunately, it's par for the course down the road. Um, you know, if you get more than a year, you're, you're doing well. And as soon as you hit that four or five game run, which inevitably happens unless you're a top two or three side in whichever particular league that you're playing in, you know you're more than likely going to face the chop. And there's always somebody ready to come in, particularly when, particularly when you are not English down the road if you're a Scotsman you know it's even harder to succeed and I think you're given less of the, the, the benefit um, of the doubt but Scott Brown and Stephen Whitaker yeah. will be the better um, for that um, experience where they'll end up next I don't know will they still be together will they go their, their separate ways but they'll get another crack at it and it's important for Scott that the next one that he chooses um, is the right one for him What would you say about your old colleague Ali McCoy's point um, today I know this morning he was critical yeah. uh, on Talk Sport of the Scotland fans for booing the uh, national anthem, which was played for England, yep. you know Scotland, obviously um, we have our own for the international games. What do you feel about it? You know what? You're probably ra- you're probably asking the wrong uh, yeah, person, Paul. Sure. And that's not because I'm dodging the question, right? Um, but it's just because I'm not from here. Yeah. Um, I've played in many a national team games um, where you know there's there's been booing and, and and all the kind of things that are quite unsavoury and all that sort of stuff. And is it? Is it nice? Of course it's not nice. Um, we used it for motivation. I can understand what Coyce is saying. I, I absolutely do. But I don't really have an opinion on it, to be honest with you. I think that players are just, you know, they, they, they get out there. They listen to the national anthem. It means what, whatever it means to every single, single individual person uh, in, in different ways. And they go out and, and want to perform for their country. Mark, it's happened for years, hasn't it? Yeah, I mean, I don't, think, I don't right. think it'll bother England yeah. players um, one bit. However, Paul, I just think, you know, on, on a human level, just be respectful um, to, to, to other nations and to other anthems, um, whatever they may be. You don't, you don't need to sing along, you don't need to applaud, you don't need to cheer, but you certainly don't need to, you don't need to boo either. So I, I, I think um, just be respectful. Okay, Thanks for yeah. uh, your views That's on that. Hard one. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a hard it's one because one. I'm thinking sure. in society yeah. today, are we a little bit too precious? You know, like, again, I come from uh, a time where slapped across the back of the head and oh, well, they're booing you yeah, go and, yeah, go and show them, them. it's yeah. kind of like that part for me is is gone <laughs> from our society but anyway that's, that's my opinion it didn't adversely affect Jude Bellingham did it <laughs> in oh. the performance oh. I mean there's some team oh, and, I and, and, again, that just, yep. and, and that just goes to show as well uh, Paul when you've got you know, and I'll use the word a passionate mm. Scotland crowd last night on a high you know, taking away the stuff of the national anthem just yeah, a passionate sure. crowd getting yeah. behind their team feeling good about themselves but it just shows you too, apart from the ability, there is the mental strength to go and cope with that. And I know it's just a friendly game, but yeah, they bum, 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 bum. No adverse effect on, on them at all because they are, a number of their players genuinely are, are world-class footballers. Yeah, I mean, Harry Kane, you know, normally you'd be talking about him, we hardly did, but he still managed to score. Uh, he is some player, he decided to leave Tottenham, but he's uh, he started really well already in Germany, hasn't he? Yeah, and it was funny. <laughs> I don't know if you, you got the wee clips on social media yeah. that we're doing right. You know, one of these guys oh, yeah. has won, you know, a, a Champions League, yeah. a, an English Premier oh, League, an FA Cup, yeah. a, a World Club Championship, bump, 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 right. and, and the other one's Harry Kane. <laughs> it was a photo of Andy Robertson and uh, <laughs> Harry Kane together. But then, you know, Kane yeah. had, uh, had the last laugh last night. But like you say, Paul, it would have been wonderful to get something last night. Of course it would have. Um, but it was all about the three points in three. And, I, and I, I'll say my point again. Scotland made that look easy on Friday night. That was a real tough place to go. You know, with the weather, different things, bit of pressure again, good mentality to cope with the situation, to cope with the pressure of making it five wins out of five 
and taking that uh, next step towards being at the Euro. So what a fantastic job Steve Clark and his players have, uh, have done in the past uh, nine months. Let's hear from the manager about that momentum. In the group, in the competitive group that we're in, five, five wins, 15 points. That's what, that's what we have. I told the lads the camp's been a success. It would be nice to have a positive result against England to make it even better. But the objective of what we came in to do has, has been done. Obviously, we didn't want to lose to our old enemy. But on the night, England were better. So sometimes you have to take your medicine in football. And tonight, we'll take our medicine and we'll try and improve. I like that line, Craig. Mm. England were better. Just be honest. And, yeah. and, and sometimes in football, that's exactly what happens. You come yeah. up against a team that's much better. And as Steve Clark says, you've got to take your medicine. Move on, dust yourself down. And, and then there's another game. Mm. Um, it was a friendly match. So... You Challenge. Know, that's, yeah, it's a friendly. <laughs> it's a friendly match. It wasn't points. The points that are important have got him in a great position to get to Germany. Doctor yeah. Guidi, what yeah. are you saying? About the medicine? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and with the, with the better team, they thoroughly uh, deserved it. I mean, there's absolutely no doubt they deserved it. They bossed the game. At times, it was a masterclass uh, for them in terms of their tactics, in terms of their shape, in terms of how they, they passed and moved. Um, and, and Steve Clark was was very honest about that. To have, I think, to have a chance last night, Paul, I'm not saying with the, with the benefit of hindsight, we'd had to have scored first. It was that kind of game. You're not against an opponent uh, like that. You'd have had to have uh, scored first. But again, bearing in mind the Scotland players, because it was the same starting eleven this Friday night, put a hell of a lot. A lot. And another three now looks easy, but the build up to it, the stress, you know, knowing what's at stake, knowing how close. Uh, that they are to, to to qualifying, so that would have taken a lot of that. And then they travel back, mm-hmm. and they probably you, you know Craig they'll have had one. In fact, they wouldn't have had, they wouldn't have had one good session yeah, build up. So you travel yeah, back. Saturday's on. a travelling day. Sunday's part of your recovery, and Monday you're just going through set pieces, etc., etc. So they've not even had one proper yeah. session uh, ahead of that game. Alan John asking on the socials, what did you make of the goalkeeper over the piece, Angus Gunn? He's had a good start to his career. Yeah, I mean, he said he's three or four um, clean sheets. You know, it was a, a problem position that, that had to be sorted because of Craig Gordon's injury, David Marshall uh, retiring. Uh, Steve Clark was looking for someone. It was it was giving him a headache because it's such an important position. And Angus Gunn has come in and, and, and filled the goal well. So, you know, credit to him. And the next hour, we're going to hear from Nat Phillips, who's been speaking ahead of the game this weekend. Will he be in the squad? You would imagine that he will appear for Celtic because the news is Navroski is going to be out for some time. He's not in the Champions League squad for yeah. Celtic, but Carter Vickers is in. Yeah, yeah. So that would suggest that you know, hopefully, if Carter Vickers can be back at least for for game four, five, and six, um, Paul Nat Phillips is. Is in the squad. I think that Phillips will start for Celtic against Dundee on, on Saturday. Okay. Ryan's asking, what about Marco Tilio? To you, Craig, he wants to know. Nobody's seen him yet, so he arrived no. with an injury. Well, yeah, clearly. Um, and he's not, not registered in this latest um, Champions League squad for, for Europe. So, yeah, I, I don't know. I actually haven't spoken or, or heard from Marco other than the signing and the news that everyone else w- w- was aware of. But he, he is carrying an injury. Be interesting to see how long he's going to be out for. And to be honest, what future he he will have at the club anyway because it was basically on the back of Ange leaving, then Brendan coming in. So is he part of the plans? But f- forgive it. What, what, what do you know about Taylor? What kind of player is he? He's a he's a wide type of player. He's he's very direct, Mark. He, he you know he's low centre of gravity. He, he, he's decent. He's decent. He can make things happen. Needs supply. Um, but I was thinking. In terms of you know the Maedas, Abadas, these type of players, he's he's going to take some time to get to that level. So he's behind them, more of a project signing. And one of those players, Rail Hatati, one of the Celtic players, is back in training, so he could be back in. They've missed him since just after the start of the season. Going to take a break for the news. Then we're back. We're going back on the lines. The Go Radio Football Show with Global Eco Energy for the best customer service. Call 0800 233 5788. Let's go. Looking to reduce your energy bills? Global Eco Energy install renewable energy products to domestic, commercial, and public sector customers with a wide range of renewable energy products, including solar PV, battery storage, and air source heat pumps. We offer bespoke solutions for a free quote and to find out more about grants and funding options. Go to global-eco.co.uk and quote Solar 10 for 10% off your installation. Available until 30th September 2023. Let's go straight back on to the line. Stephen Reside is on. Good evening, Stephen. How are we doing, guys? You all right? Yeah, good we're Stephen. good, thank Stephen. you. Disappointed last night, but well, it was, uh, what did you make of it? I thought um, 
Second half was good. Mm-hmm. I was a bit disappointed with the first half. I don't think we got a press quite right. I think when you look at the games against Denmark, Spain, that run that we've been on and we've beat, the, those real quality teams have repressed them with new energy and pounded them all over the pitch. I thought that we let England come on as a wee bit last night in the first half. Um, I actually said to my mate just before England's first goal went in, I said, it'd be great to get in here now now because I don't think we'll play this bad in the second half. And we didn't play bad in the second half. I don't think I thought we were better. We scored the goal. Well, Harry Maguire scored the goal. Yeah. Um, and I think they were rattled for the bit. Five ten minutes after that, John McGinn has a header. Can you quite capitalise and yeah. them in the top goal be then? Yeah. Um, yeah. It, it's very done it. But listen, we've beat Cyprus. We've done what we set out to do. So mm-hmm. it's all positive still. Mark, yeah, I, I mean it's you know we've we'll spoken about it quite a lot in the show uh, tonight. Um, you know, picking the bones. I mean, one, one thing I'd like to see with Scotland going forward, even against your bigger opposition or your more talented opposition, is maybe a better way to put it. Um, would I, I'd like to see Adams and Dykes together I don't think it really works one of them on their own I think the only play yeah. you get the best out of them when the two of them are together and I know that means you're, you're, you're sacrificing something in other areas of the pitch maybe not, it's not the best idea for the next competitive game which is Spain away in Seville but I just think you know nine games out of ten find a way for the two of them to, to, to be to be mm-hmm. together I, I think, sorry, Paul, I think the only way that, that against the very, very best that you're going to be highly competitive is that you're, you're able to handle the overloads that these teams want to have in the middle of the park. I mean, how many times did you see Harry, Harry Kane? Uh, deep, 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 and it creates an overload. And, and when you've got that overload in the middle of the park, whereas Scotland have got the overload in terms of the five at the back, you need, you need an overload in a different area to be able to influence a game of football to go and win it against the very best, in my opinion. Stephen, what would you say? Yeah, I agree with what Craig says there in, in terms of an overload. But uh, in the second half, I noticed that, that England were, were utilising the full-backs a lot, um, getting them high up the pitch. They were getting a lot of space in wide areas as well. Um, and I just think the difference between us and a real elite side at the minute, I can see it could be up high in the north stand. Mm-hmm. It's the speed on which they move the ball and the way I pass through the thirds and, and the lanes. That, that's honestly the difference is that we speed of thought. I mean, I put a tweet out last week saying England have got three world-class players in my eyes. Mm-hmm. Phil Foden, Jude Bellingham and Harry Kane. <laughs> and every single one of them scored last night. Yeah. But I just thought that I just thought that Jude Bellingham was just a cut above. That that boy, that boy's something special. Sure. Did you have a fiver in that, Stephen? That's, That's what I was thinking. thinking. That'd have yeah, been some time. Exactly. That'd have yeah. been some time. I think Be- Bellingham, um, ah, he's, he's exceptional. You know, running out of superlatives. Yeah, but but genuinely, you know, and 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 I think the other thing you can say about Bellingham um, is he clearly doesn't get carried away with the publicity. He's not full of himself. He's a dedicated professional. He's got a good family beside him. He's got a good team. Around him, we got we got an insight, uh, you know that kind of stuff as yeah. well from Paul Lambert. But he's never in the front page, mm. you know. He's, you know sure. all, all those kind That's of stuff. Factor. So you yeah. know, you know for sure that he's only going to get better and he's going to be at the top. He's not a flash in the pan and he's going to go off the rails and get carried away with himself. Sure. He is a proper, dedicated, professional footballer who is only going to get better and better in his job. And I, I think we've said it already tonight, but he's only. 20 or 21 is mm, absolutely f- absolutely frightening what he could go and do in the game you're talking about Scotland here's a final word from Steve Clark um, about the game the way we shaped the team uh, the personnel I started with I had some ideas in my head that I wanted to see I wanted to see how it worked I obviously didn't work that well in the first half I thought it was a little bit better second half when the changes came as well I thought the changes were good gave us a little bit more impetus a bit, a bit of energy Ryan Christie came into the pitch really well which, which is nice to see. And then, like I said, just as it looked as though we might get a chance to go further in the game and get something out of the game, I was just getting ready to make some more positive changes. England got the third and that sort of killed the night. So, Stephen, Friday night, obviously that was amazing. 15 points out of the five games. And then we were hoping last night for a draw with Norway and Georgia. It wasn't to be. 2-1 Norway. Spain, obviously, beating Cyprus 6-0. The... Have you any doubts whatsoever or we'll turn it into the positive? When are we going to finally qualify fully? Well, I've no, I've no doubts because I've already booked my flight and accommodation in Germany. So, Good. So that shows you 
It shows you how confident yeah. I am that we're going to be there. Mm-hmm. Um, I think I think it will be done in the next batch of qualifiers, uh, whether that's us getting a result in Spain. But uh, Norway needs to beat Spain. Mm-hmm. If Norway draw or lose against Spain, then, then, then we're there. So I don't see that happening. I mean, it is possible because Norway have great players and and Odegaard and Haaland, but you look up there at the end of the pitch, I mean, Jordan are very nearly always that it's a 2 2 draw mm-hmm. after Norway being 2 0 up. Um, so, listen, I, I'm I'm really, really confident that we're there. And even if it doesn't happen in October, yeah. this, then it's a chance for this Scotland team to prove what I've been saying that they're built different by going to Georgia, which we couldn't do in the past and, and getting a result. I think you're absolutely right. I see Craig nodding yeah. as well. Talks a lot of good sense. Not very much yeah. so. Like I said, I mean, Spain at home, it's, it's a tough game. And again, you can't really go there expecting to dominate the ball, mm. but you still want to be in a position where you can go and be well organised and, and still threatening. And I think that's that's possible. But, you know, if you don't get anything there, you're right. Georgia away from home is going to be the big one and probably where a lot of teams have, have fallen before. So I don't expect this team. I expect them to be in Germany. So it's back to Motherwell for you this weekend. Home game against St Mirren. Mark Guidi, the former uh, goalkeeper from St Mirren Reserves. <laughs> gonna, wait, wait, what year was that? Me, isn't he? Oh, steady. <laughs> uh, Stephen, how are you feeling about this uh, this oh. weekend? That one, um, I'm approaching that one with a wee bit of trepidation, to be honest mm. with you, because St Mirren are in good form themselves. And you look at our injury list, we've got three strikers out in Wilkinson, Obika and Berith, and then we're Spittle and... Liam Kelly are down to the game. Yeah. So we'll get eight first team players injured. So Suspension there's a chance well. that I may be moved from the disabled shelter to the bench on Saturday afternoon. So, Steve, you, um, I'll tell you what, you go and do the team talk because you were great there in Scotland, but I know it's a worry. Who's your reserve keeper? Uh, we've got Aston Oxburgh, um, English boy. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think he was at what? Oxford when he was younger. Okay. If, if I'm not mistaken, yeah. he's not played many games. But he played against Queen of the South and uh, the Betfred. Uh, it's not the Betfred Cup anymore. The yeah. Premier Sports Cup group stages. Uh, um, basically, sorry, I'll get it right eventually, guys. Yeah. Um, but I, uh, you know, he played in the group stages of the League Cup. Uh, he, looked, he looked okay, but obviously, you're hoping that you're number one in Liam Kelly's fit and Blair Spittle. Uh, with those strikers being missing, he's been a massive creative force for this, so. I'm hoping they two are fit, but if, if they're both out, I'd take a point for that game right now. Mark, at West of Scotland derby there. That'll be a good one. Isn't it? Yeah, yeah. But really, but really, mm-hmm. as you said, Paul, we've got six really good fixtures on Saturday in, in the Premier uh, ship to look uh, forward to. And um, yeah, I can I can understand why um, Stephen's just a wee bit reserved and not to get too yeah. carried away. You know, St. Man, I've got a good look um, about them. Motherwell. Uh, missing a couple, um, I think it's important that you know get their captain, their goalkeeper Liam Kelly, um, back um, if they can. But um, yeah, Motherwell need to go something win that game. And Stephen Robinson obviously came back to Fir Park. Yeah, a uh, mm-hmm. couple of Motherwell players um, in the team. So um, yeah, uh, it's, it's, it's got a good one. Definitely a spicy encounter that. Yeah, mm. Mother- and Motherwell look, Motherwell have been very very good um, at home. Tough to beat, um, but they're going to be weakened. Uh, and when you know you, you carry a lot of, I, I guess, players out. I think McGinn also got sent off, so maybe a yes. suspension there as yeah. well. Yeah. Um, and yeah. and some some Mirren have been very good, very good. Yeah. Got off to a great start. Um, so it's going to be a real contest. Stephen, what's the reception like for Stephen Robinson when he comes back? Oh, all, all, all positive. Yeah. Honestly, he he was wonderful. He was at Motherwell just straight. We've seen it when Stuart McCall was in charge at Motherwell. Sometimes things run their course and players need a fresh face. Yeah. It's not necessarily that someone became a bad manager. They just need a different voice in addressing them. I think that's why Stephen Robinson ultimately said, look, guys, I'm going to design. I think Alan Burroughs at the time yeah. was begging him to stay. And that's because of the great job that he had done. Um, but he's went and worked wonders at St. Martin. What he's really good at is getting players in that suit his style. He likes to, he seems to be physical, um, and he did, he's seen that when they had big Curtis Main in that up front. Mm-hmm. He's great at identifying players that, that shoot his style, and then if he loses them, he's got the next one done to the post. Stephen Reside, as always, thanks so much for calling 0808 17 17 700. A manager who knows his style of play, 
That's what the Rangers fans want to see from Michael Beale. What's the style? What's the starting 11? And that takes us to our next caller, Paul, big Rangers fan. Good evening, Paul. Uh, evening, Paul. Uh, thanks for letting me on your show tonight. No bother. Um, yeah, no, I was just, you don't mind me say, I was just phoning on about the Scotland game last night. Is that all right? Of course. On you go. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, just off as I phoned up a couple of days back just saying, you no, know, from my age group, anyway, I'm in my 40s, so. No, I, th- I think it's one of the best I've seen. No, a really strong team, and no, looking forward to the Euros and potentially part one and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Obviously, disappointed for last night's game. I know I watched it, and I think we kind of let ourselves down. Um, I don't know how because you no, know, we've, we've done some fantastic results with Spain and things. Like that. I don't think, I don't think England. They're kind of saying maybe level with Spain, to be honest, and I don't think yeah. we did anything to fear. I just felt we gave them too much respect, and um, they were outstanding. They've got outstanding individuals like Bellamy and all that. To, uh, Bellingham and things like that um, but I just wanted to make a wee, a wee joke about it to be honest with because I, mm-hmm. I feel we're in a great place I don't want it to bring down morale but you know just like typify Scotland you've got potentially qualifying that day mm-hmm. you're potentially going to beat the old enemy and what does Scotland do they build you up to let you down <laughs> and maybe that's one of the songs you want to play because I, I guess that's just the funny thing about being a Scotland fan yeah. you build yourself up and then you have these days but you know, I don't take anything away from the, the, the team. I think, you no, know, looking forward to the Euros, and I think we've suffered a lot. Well, I certainly have in my age group. You know, last time I seen them was the 98 World Cup, and I thought, mm-hmm. if you told me then, I'd be sure. waiting yeah. all this time to get there again to a, to a major tournament. I, I would have done not thought about that so um, no, but you're right we don't want to be negative now we're no. realistic Craig but momentum yeah. the manager spoke about it it's important it's, it's massive and look I, I think the cycles that are ahead for me are the most important things for Scotland and they're in a far better space now than what they've ever been in, in the time that I've known what's been happening in Scotland <laughs> Mark so, so I, I'm, I'm still extremely confident I'm pretty sure that the fans are that they have a, a team that will continually be able to put themselves in positions where they're going to major tournaments Right, that for me is, is so important because, you know, as as you touched on Paul, there's a lot of people that maybe haven't experienced that as supporters, you know, and it reminds me a lot. And I hate always reverting back to Australia. It reminds me of a, a lot about Australia. So many years, 32 years out of uh, the international fold, not going to World Cups and these kind of things. Whereas now they've got a, a team and teams that regularly will play in major tournaments. I believe Scotland are, are exactly the same, and the same things are going to happen. Good habits keep them going, Mark, isn't it? We want to continue. Yeah, yeah you know, um, we want to be there and, and we've put ourselves in a great position. You know, it's it's not often Scotland and, and the Verge are getting 17, 18 points, maybe more from a qualifying section. And that's what you need, Paul, to, to put yourself right into the mix. To, and normally we are, you know, 10, 11, 12, because right away you've got to win your home games uh, and you've got to nick uh, a few points away from home. And that's what Scotland have managed to do. Uh, in the five games, you know, just to, to be honest, you know, beating Norway at home, beating St Spain, sorry, beating Norway in Oslo, beating Spain at Hamden, absolutely sensational to get six points out of six. You know, it really is. It's something pretty special, and that's why we will get to to, to Germany, and we'll see where that takes us after that. Remember, we're 24 countries in it. 16 go through to the next phase, only 8 go out. So in many ways, it's, it's harder to get knocked out than it is um, to, 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 to stay in. So we've got to have a, a, a right good uh, chance of that too. But it's exciting times, you know, it, it really is. What's well, it's to progress to get knocked out? <laughs> so I'm saying, you know, well, managed well, to get knocked out the last time. Right. Listen, I think, I think you know, given, and I'm not making an excuse, but the whole you know, thing, COVID would still get on in the, in yeah. the crowds and stuff. And I think maybe we're just... We kind of couldn't believe that we were at a major tournament the last time, yeah. if that makes sense, Paul. Now they're in a much better place. You know, for example, your McGinn's, your Mc- McTominay's, your Tierney's. Your, look at look at the improvement in them in the past eighteen months. Aaron Hickey, look at the improvement in him. Adams and Dykes, look at the improvement in it. Even you know, a guy that that, that that does well week in week out. He's not a regular starter. Steve Clark just mentioned there. Ryan Christie. Yeah. Now, Ryan Christie's a fabulous football player, so intelligent in that final third. So Billy Gilmore, yep. you know, as, as Craig used a great word about him, the resilience that he's shown in the past year to stick in and force his way into Re- Roberto De Zerbi's plan. So you look at all that, so where we were two years ago, because Paul probably, see if you look at the squad that we'll take to Germany next summer compared to what we had uh, on, our, mm-hmm. on our own patch, Two years ago, there'll not be many changes. Mm-hmm. So take the goalkeepers out of it. So see your, is it 24 man squad you're allowed? So see your, your, your 20, 21 outfield places. I, I bet you 14 or 15 of them will be the same. Yep. Yeah. You know? 
Paul, before we go to the break, can we bring you back to your, your own club team, to Rangers? You've had, what, yeah. 10, 12 days or whatever since uh, the game with Celtic. Um, Mark Guidi was saying earlier on what a huge game it is this weekend, St Johnson against Rangers. I think everyone said after the Old Firm game, you can't afford to slip up. How are you feeling about the game in Perth on Saturday? Um, kind of seen how the reaction will be. That'll kind of tell me who's mm-hmm. who's going to get up for the fight. Like I, I think I was on your show a couple of days ago, and it was Rob McLean that was asking me. And he said, "What do you keep Barisic?" And I, I just think he's my glove down. I'll be honest with you. I, I, it, it, when the chips are down, he wants off. He did that against PSV. I don't know what Craig thinks about it, but right. he gets these wee niggly knocks yeah. when the going gets. And, and you can't have characters like that. We need. need the Barry Ferguson's, the Craig Moore's of this world that are going to step up to the plate. And it's going to be interesting to see signings where they're going to do that or not. Um, well, I missed that the other day because I was away for a few days. But, Craig, so the players have to. Surely they're, they're going to step up. And who is going to step up? I'm interested in who they will play. Yeah. What's the lineup? You know, well, the line-up, line-up will be interesting, no doubt about that. Um, because I think that this team so far has struggled because of the lack of consistency in the starting eleven. Um, it's not really allowed partnerships to grow. Um, look, it's a tough job for Michael Beale to to turn this around and, and to find something that's going to work and work immediately. That's basically the situation that he finds himself in now. Uh, and sometimes as well, when you watch games on television or you're actually at games live, for example. Now, I know that Lammers and, and some Rangers supporters might go, ah, oh, you're talking nuts. I was at the game and, and, and Lammers has the huge miss and everyone's talking about the huge miss, right? Now, I'll tell you what, I've never... That's not, that's, let me start again. Okay. His desire, even after a mistake, mm-hmm. to want to get on the ball, to want to be involved in the game, even when he was taking stick uh, and, and flack and all that sort of stuff, and I thought, that's, that's what they need. That's what Rangers need just now. He's, he's getting absolute dogs abuse yet. He's still wanting to get on the ball. He's still wanting to be involved in the game, and that's the type of player that Rangers need a lot more of because... They are going to go through a situation now where everyone's under the pump. So you start Lammers on Saturday? Again, Mark, that's just what I've seen. And, and no, it was but, a quality. But, 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 it was yeah, a quality. But that's, but that's what they're needing. I would play... Yeah, they pa- can't have what players I'll, that are going to hide. They need... So I, I, if go by what you were saying, and, I, and I, I, you know, the, the, the miss, and he was so close to, mm, yeah. to equalising. Um, so, well, give him a start then. Give him a start on Saturday. Well, why not? Like, so I just watch. I watch individuals at times because I want to learn and, and, and find out a little bit more. And it was just, well, like I said, it was one thing that really stood out for me. Um, and that's a quality that I, I admire because I know it's a quality that's needed at the club. Paul, thanks a lot for calling. About Scotland, we drifted into domestic scene. There's so much coming up in the coming weeks and you'll hear it all here on the Go Radio Football Show. The Go Radio Football Show with Global Eco Energy. A tailored service where each code is created with the best products and a fair price, no upfront costs. Let's go! Just a couple of days away from getting back to the Singe Premiership and also the first, second and, of course, the Championship as well where the battle is on. Who is going to come up automatically next year? And that's when it will be, of course, April, May, we'll know. And who's going to be in that second position for the playoffs? Below Partick Thistle, what were they? 22 minutes away from three up. Well, there was a three-goal difference was needed. And, my goodness, who would have believed it would have happened? Uh, meanwhile, just before the international break, Celtic signed a couple of players just before the window closed. One of them, Nat Phillips, on loan from Liverpool. He's been speaking to the media this afternoon about settling in. didn't take me long to settle in. The lads have been great with me. The staff's been great with me. Until flat now, so it's all been very smooth. Um, and I'm enjoying it. What about his role at Celtic? We've not gone into that in too much detail at the moment. Obviously, the situation, like you say, at the moment is that there's a lot of injuries and there is a hole there that um, hopefully I can fill. And then we've not gone beyond that. It's just a matter of, you know, take it step by step. I need to get in and play games and, you know, get into the rhythm of things. And when that comes, then maybe there'll be a conversation then. But that's... Obviously off into the future. Those in the know, that was supposed to be us, thought he would play at Ibrox a week past uh, Sunday and he didn't. He watched it from the press room. Uh, He spoke about uh, Celtic's win. You know, the lads dug in well. Obviously it was tough at the end, um, but the lads showed that um, when the backs were against the wall a bit, they can dig in at the same time. You know, it's a huge result and a huge win. Um, So they performed well. Obviously I wanted to be in and around the dressing room and amongst the boys. Um, taking it all in um, inside the media room itself 
wasn't as fun as it might have been in the stands, but um, at the same time, it might not have been that fun in the stands as probably the only Celtic person in a stand. Um, but I enjoyed it. Yeah, it was just good to be there and supporting the lads. It was obviously a tense game to watch as well, but an enjoyable one. Of course, Mark, that would be why he was in the media room, I suppose. Um, but it worked. Brendan Rodgers got it right on the day, didn't he? With a weakened Celtic defence, but it worked for them. What are you thinking about Nat Phillips brought for Champions League football? Yeah, well, he's in the, the, the Champions League uh, squad. Uh, like I say, Paul, I think he'll play on Saturday against Dundee with a view to, you know, you know if it's a partnership with Slager Bielke um, for the uh, final for the, the Coup, um on Tuesday night. Um, and then, uh, you know, take it from there. Um, I thought he would have played against uh, uh, Rangers at Ibrox, but credit to, to Liam Scales. He was absolutely terrific, you know, a, a real proper performance, real solid defensive display, whereas on the other hand, you know, Laga Bielka, you know, looked a nervous wreck to me and, and, and in some respect, you know, Craig's talking about Lammers not hiding after he missed that chance and Laga Bielka kept looking for the ball but he, you know, he, he kept giving it away and I was saying, you need to be careful with this but I don't know if, if he was asking for it or Joe Hart was just giving it whatever the tactics um, were but it seemed to me that Rangers created their best moments in the game, particularly in the second half when they're chasing an equaliser, when Celtic were playing around with the ball needlessly at the back and that was giving Rangers chance because Celtic, certainly Lager Bielke looked really shot um, in confidence and Rangers were making it happen that he was getting the ball and then boom, boom, boom. But anyway, to go back to the point, Nat Phillips, I think he'll play um, on, uh, on Saturday and, um, you know, Speaking to people that have watched him for for, for Liverpool, um, then he's a he's a solid defender. Paul, he's no nonsense. Just loves to defend, loves to let the opposition number nine know that he's in a game, and thrives in being part of a a clean sheet um, set up. So it might be that that Scales misses out. That would probably be harsh given his performance mm-hmm. um, in the last game. And I also have to say, I, I think Joe Hart was superb. You know, when called upon, he made two massive saves uh, for Celtic. Maybe three, but certainly two massive saves. And, um, you know, just showed the, the, the quality he's got. And again, how it's easy just to say, oh, yeah, get rid of the goalie and he's this and he's that. And, and I get that because he's had two or three shaky moments this season. But when he was called upon at big, big times in the game, he showed why he's, he's, he's the number one. Craig, on the goalkeeper? Yeah, I've I maybe missed uh, people saying that uh, he's not good enough or get rid of him, but I think... I, yeah, I, a lot I, of Celtic supporters yeah. want, want, want to them wow. out. Wow, wow, yeah. because he's, um, he's a fantastic professional um, and he's a fantastic goalkeeper. Of course, you know, he has a mistake and all that sort of stuff in his locker and everyone does, uh, but the experience and how he's able to bounce back and, and I guess the presence that he has within that and how he's thought of uh, at, at Celtic and all of his clubs speaks volumes. Um, moving on to Nat Phillips, Nat yeah. Phillips. Is he your kind of defender? Well, I mean, Mark saying that he, you know, loves to, um, you know, maybe have words with a with a number nine, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, and loves defending and, and those kind yeah. of things. They're yeah. traits. They're traits that I, you know, were traits that I kind of had and enjoyed. Yeah. Um, the way he spoke, right? If he if he plays as well as he speaks, because yeah. again, that, that come he come across as just a really. Um, he's in camp. Yeah, but ex- but also experience. Yeah, yeah. For me, in the way he yeah. spoke, the experience come through in his interview. So look, he, he's he's at a level. Um, he'll come through and do a great job in what is at this moment in time a band aid solution um, for Celtic. I think everyone realizes that. But who knows what could happen in the future on the back of some good performances? And on Liam Scales, Mark, could he be standing in for Greg Taylor, for example? Well, that, that's an option to move him to, to left that's back. Right. And I think looking at the Celtic Champions League, Champions League squad that Brendan Rodgers has, has chosen, um, Bernabeu yes. isn't in it. So that would suggest that, that Greg Taylor is obviously the number one left back. They didn't sign a left back during the transfer window. So Scales would be your, your sort of natural backup to He's Greg Taylor for, for Europe. Yeah. Yes, and he also can fill in superbly well on the left back. I mean, again, you know, credit to him but where did that performance come to it was absolutely Mm -hmm. terrific he was he was really really um, solid it must mean Craig no better than any he's he's done it for Rangers as a kid and then as an experienced pro but to go there and again under the circumstance where you're 
part of a team that's against 50,000 home supporters. Yeah, you know, yeah. Anywhere you turn, you're not seeing anybody that's yeah. giving you a cheer, mm. a smile, or yeah. keeping yeah. going. So to, to do it under that circumstance, a real credit to them. Okay, we'll go back on the lines. We'll come back to Nat Phillips and also news on Rangers as well, looking at their squad for the Europa League. Connor's on the line. Connor, good evening. Hi. Good evening, Paul Craig and Mark Hayes. Dude. Hi, yeah, Connor. Good, thank Hi, you. Connor. So, what's in your mind? Is it Rangers or Scotland? Um, but but I both, but I both. Um, okay. I'll, I'll start with Scotland. Um, <sighs> di- disappointed. Yeah. The last night, um, especially of all teams, for us to have what I would argue is one of our worst performances under Steve Clark. It had to be against England, typically. Um, I just, I, <laughs> my issue the last night was I watched that game and. I honestly, for the first time in ages, couldn't work out what the game plan was. I didn't know what we were trying to do because we, we started off from minute one just allowing England the freedom of Hamden to dictate the play. At times they had players standing for four or five seconds just left and able to pick a pass out, which you can't do with the quality of players they've got. And I just... But it was, it was strange because I, although I felt we were a bit too deep and too defensive we were strangely very very open as well I mean as mm-hmm. good as their players are some of the spaces they were finding I haven't seen us being given away and, and I just I expect this to go to that game with a sort of Spain like mm-hmm. performance with the intensity um, and the intention that we had Is that part of it Craig or what's your reaction to that is it the fact it's a friendly it's a challenge no, game No I don't think no. it's any, anything to do with that I think um Goals tend to influence in terms of the games, and, and you know a lot of the time Scotland have been in good positions. They've got the goals and then um, gone on and maybe done a job. Okay, Norway away, different yeah. story. Um, but I, I think that what, what I probably seen Connor um, that I've not seen too much of is is probably the amount of entries that England were able to make in and around uh, Scotland's eighteen yard box. Yeah, um, you know balls getting in between between the five cent- uh, not five central defenders but back five. Mm-hmm. I felt that that was probably something that was explored more than any team uh, in recent times. I don't know how many entries there were into that area, but um, it felt as if it was a lot watching the game. I think as well, look, we've got to remember, you know, England are, you know, possibly the best team in Europe in terms of international. They possibly they are. Yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah. easily. I mean, you look at the quality of player, they're better than Germany, oh, yeah. they're better than Italy. Arguably, well, France, isn't it? In Spain, France, yeah. you know, France have got some special sure. players, particularly up top. But you could argue you're playing mm-hmm. against perhaps the best team in Europe. So ultimately, we're going to be up against it. It's, it's just a matter of fact. And, and that doesn't mean to say, as Connor points out, that we shouldn't have a game plan, we shouldn't be confident. We've made a mistake or two, we've been, we've been punished, we didn't quite get at them enough to, to put um, uh, Ramsdale um, under enough pressure, etc., etc. But Look, without making excuses for last night, it's all about being a, being a European fan. I mean, we've, we've moaned enough and we've slaughtered yeah. enough uh, previous squads and previous managers for not getting to European finals. We're on the cusp of it uh, with Steve Clark. So, as, as I say, last night would have been a bonus. But but it'd been a really good experience for the player. Because, you know, do you know what? Ahead of going to Spain next month, we need to go up again. We can't afford yeah. to give any team that wee inch, you know? And with experienced players, that we, we, we still there, w- there was nerves. There were nerves in yeah. Scotland, mm-hmm. absolutely. And you know what? That is going to be a learning as well. You never stop learning. Is that because we were up against England? Yeah, you know, I the think occasion, so. Yeah, the, 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 you know what? People wanted, yeah. wanting to do so well mm. for them and their families. Uh, and it's only, it's only, you know what? I'd rather people be nervous because it actually shows that you want to do well. Do you know what was good, Craig and Mark? It was good to have opposition fans there. And that's the derby. That's yeah. the international derby, isn't yeah. it? And to have the opposite, and I thought of that with the old firm, you know, I think it's rubbish that we don't have uh, opposition fans there. And I'm not talking about seven or eight hundred. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Five, six, seven thousand. But that one is on the fans there last day. Yeah. Oh, there were, I don't know how many, but it's yeah. several thousand. Oh, okay. You could hear yeah. them. Yeah, yeah. yeah for sure. Uh, Connor, quick word on Rangers then for this weekend. Mark was saying earlier on, this is a huge game. You know, you have to win it. Yeah, I absolutely, totally agree with Mark. I, I personally think that if Rangers get anything other than three points um, at the weekend, and listen, what it is, St. Johnson, you can't disrespect that it's not always easy to go up there um, and they'll make it hard. But anything other than three points, then I think Beal is out the door come Monday morning because the pressure that's on him already, you know, already a lot of Rangers fans, myself included, aren't convinced he should still be in the job. So to, to not get three points at the weekend 
you you would think even the, the board would maybe have to look at that and go, mm, is that, you know, is, is the pressure that's going to come now, because it'll be even worse, just going to be too much. Um, but on the positive for you, though, as a Rangers fan, is the handbrake coming off then? Is it going to be Danilo and Dezos together? You know, are they going to allow... What do you think? What's your what's your line-up for, sun, for Saturday? You know, I hope that's how we go. I hope Danilo and Dezos do get to play together. I'm quite happy to have, I think, Todd Campbell playing... And a, a number ten role just in behind them, mm-hmm. uh, and you can have I think a back three of Raskin and uh, Jack and Sifuentes is, and you know the defence takes yeah. care of itself mm-hmm. by and large. But I think we've got it because Michael Beale has threatened to take the handbrake off, and he certainly said he's going to. So yeah. he's got to now and just go out there and put in a, a really decent performance because the one thing we do have is time on our hands. We also have the fact that next weekend. Celtic have a very tough away fixture against Livingston, so we can avoid slipping up. Mm-hmm. We can make up the ground that we've we've lost a little bit by putting in our own shifts and hoping that somebody else does us a favour until we get to play Celtic again. Mark, yeah, I mean that's a fair point. Uh, my corner, you know, Rangers need to win games, uh, and the belief that you know Celtic might have a, a slip up, and, and we're now getting into that phase, Paul, uh, over the next three months. Uh, in fact, right up to mid December, when you know it's either Tuesday, Wednesday, Saturday for, for 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 Celtic, and then Thursday, Sunday for Rangers. Six games now. Do I think Celtic will win their six games after the six European games? No, I don't. Do I think Rangers will? No, I don't. There'll be points points dropped. Um, you know, I said that this time last year that it would take, I think probably a hundred points would win the league. I thought that the old firm would be, would be that good. This season, Paul, I think ninety one, ninety two could That's win awesome. you, could win you the league. Um, so I think there'll be a few drop points. It's just a case of capitalising, um, and when it happens. And uh, for Michael Beale, he's now at that stage. Paul, I've heard many managers say it was, it was Gordon Strachan that, that put us onto the phrase as manager Celtic. There are certain games where you pick a team, not necessarily your best team or your most talented team, but you pick a team for certain games. As though your life depended on it, you know, like this is like or, or your yeah, job. This sure. is a game to save my job. Michael Beale's now in that situation. Craig, yeah, look, uh, Michael. Michael Beale's job now is to um, is to have every player believing that they're able to go out and get footballing results, win games of football. That's as simple as that, Paul. It really is. Now, we're not being disrespectful. I'm not being disrespectful to Sir Johnson to say that. The Rangers have got better players, right? But that doesn't that doesn't mean that you go and go and get that result. Michael's job is to convince those players that they're better than St Johnston and go out there and show that and go and win a game of football. That's the only way that he's going to survive, right? Um, so I'm not even talking about who's going to play. It's his job is about convincing those players that they are good enough to go out and be St Johnston away, and then the next game will take care of itself. And then the next game. But that right now, and is that fighting for your life? Absolutely, it's fighting mm-hmm. for your life. That's what's at stake for Michael Beal in his Rangers career is, 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 is on the line if he doesn't get that this weekend. Can I ask you, before Connor goes on the, I nearly said Champions League squad, the Europa League squad, uh-huh. yeah, so yep. we've got Betis coming up in yes. Seville. Uh, there's no Yilmaz in the squad, no so what does Dell, that tell us? Yeah, apparently. Uh-huh. I mean, you've got uh, Sterling that obviously is yeah. a flexible mm-hmm. player that can cover all positions in the, the back four. What does that tell us? It tells us that, that Barisic is clearly uh, you know, in there and, and, the, there. and the main left fullback. Yeah. But yeah, a little bit similar to the situation, I guess, with um, Celtic and, and Scales where it's got a player that can cover a couple of positions in that back line. Sterling does that for Rangers. He doesn't want to give his team, does he? In De- terms of what? Danilo and Desers, do you think? And I take your point, it's about an attitude. But, yeah. you know, Danilo, 5.8 look, look, million. I would, I would love to see Danilo play it, but I'd love to see him in a central area. So, you know, I mean, I don't disagree. and uh, would love yeah. to see him playing in the top two. Um, you know, Roof, and I keep going back to Roof, I still think in terms of know-how... Um, and, and scoring goals and big goals, I still think he's the best that Rangers have got at the football club. That is is why the debate goes about new players. Connor, thanks for the call. The Go Radio Football Show with Global Eco Energy, a tailored service where each code is created with the best products and a fair price, no upfront costs. Let's go. Lots of calls coming in tonight after Scotland won England three last night at a packed Hampden Park. 150 years 
of uh, that international game. It's the first one ever. And last night, though, England just uh, too good. But my memory of it will be, Craig, seeing Jude Bellingham in action at the age of 20. And no wonder Real Madrid won the battle to get him. Liverpool really wanted him. But uh, some place to be, isn't it, with the Galacticos? And he is going to be one to watch for maybe the next 15 years. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What, a, what a player. And, and so it just looks as if he just takes everything in his stride. Yeah. He looks as if he's 35 and already had a whole career <laughs> yeah, yeah. in terms yeah. of the, yeah. the way he conducts himself, ability-wise, his physicality, his size. He, this boy has everything. It's, uh, it's not a phrase you would often hear, but... At 125 million pounds is a bargain. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. He is, isn't he? Really good. You know, yeah. from uh, yeah. Real Madrid to get him for 125 million quid, it's a bargain. Sure. When you see the way Chelsea spray money around mm. for players, yeah. that, I mean, I know it's not 125 million, mm. but not that far off it. And yeah. uh, they couldn't lace his boots. Okay. Best player ever. Oh. Guys, remember, I threatened you with this one in the first 10 or 15 minutes. Hard to say. International ever, wise, ever. ever, yeah, that you saw, oh, okay. or the, I mean, I didn't say I'd say Pele. Do you have to have seen? Do you have to have seen a well, player live? Or could no, have I don't think so. Who would you say the best player that you've seen? Diego Maradona. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Why? Me, yeah. Why? I tell you what. Very impressionable age I was. I was 11 mm-hmm. years old. 1986 World Cup. I yeah. think single-handedly. Excuse the pun. Yeah. Um, <laughs> mate, won, won, won the won the won the World Cup for and and then I just followed yeah. them, watched him at Napoli and I go. For me, he Messi is the closest thing to a Maradona in terms of individually being able to do anything he wants and and win a game of football. But Maradona for me, uh, yeah. I mean, Mar- I'm just just back for Naples. Uh, where they, of course, he helped Napoli win the league and the champions um, again. And, and you think the way, that, <clears throat> excuse me, that he got leathered oh. by defenders, you know, coming through the back of him, and you know, he, I mean, he single-handedly took Napoli to that that title. Um, as well, so yeah, mm. Messi's been exceptional, Ronaldo's been exceptional, but it, I don't think he's got that same kind of likability factor because he's, he's just <laughs> you know so full of himself. <laughs> but what a player! Um, it's yeah, so yeah. then you know, you, you mentioned earlier, you know, if, if we're talking closer to, yeah. to home, you know, Ken, Kenny Dalglish is a sensational footballer and everything yeah. he achieved as well in, in his club mm. um, career. So we've had many um, special ones. I, I would probably say, considering that he won the World Cup there, Messi, um, two, I would just have maybe Messi just shading it yeah. over Maradona. But, but you, you're a yeah. Pele man, Paul. Well, I'm a wee bit older than yeah. you. And, uh, George, yeah, George Best? I, I, I no, George, George Best played against him. Yeah? He nutmegged me. How twice. many times? Uh, yeah, <laughs> twice at the Paul Junior's <laughs> ground. <laughs> That's, oh, that was steady. That was the after. No. Anyway, I know you yeah. pose. Did you play against George Best? I did, oh, yeah. That's incredible. Oh, he brilliant. was phenomenal. And it, it was a team, uh, Billy McNeil played in it, All-Stars, Willie Henderson. Yeah. Um, there were so many, but George Best was phenomenal. Jimmy Johnson, yeah. I mean, who was phenomenal. But George Best, yeah, that's a great point. What a player. Oh. Um, Joe, I, 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 not up there the best, but just yeah. very quick. I was... Mm-hmm. I was um, out at Stirling Petrov's benefit game in Sofia last yes. week. The, the, How did the, the it Bulgarian go? Yeah. yeah, it was wonderful and raised lots of money uh, for his charity. But do you know who played um, for almost an hour? And he played in the left wing and he played against Alan Hutton, who was playing for the 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 the, okay. the, world, the, the All Stars yeah. team. Christo Stoichkov. Oh. What a, his left peg was still a wand, still a wand. His first touch, he's pulling it down out the air. The crowd were. Were loving him and uh, he still shot and the way he was linking up with Berbatov in the game, it, it was a joy. Just wow. White hair now, yeah. just out now. Obviously, put on a. But this was, a few was this pounds. in Barcelona under Johan Cruyff? Is that him we're talking yeah, about? Yeah, By the way, How old is he now? What would he uh, must be pretty 60, early 60s. Wow. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it must be early 60s. Did Henrik yeah. Larsson play? Henrik played, I think Henrik scored and finished uh, three each. Berbatov. Um, wow. uh, How's Henrik looking? Play, yeah, yeah, he was looking magnificent. He was in great form. Alan yeah. Hutton. Came oh, out yes. as well. Uh, we still see him Roy, in the telly a Roy lot. Keane, yeah. Roy Keane came and played in the yeah. game, came off the bench. Martin O'Neill uh, managed him. Berbatov, Martin Petrov played in the, in the game for the, the the Bulgarian team. Joe Cole, Florin Maluda. Um, Maluda? Yeah, wow. Florin wow. M- yeah. Maluda um, uh, played. So, aye, aye, it was, um, it, was, uh, it was good. But just when we're talking about great players, Paul Wonderful. Stoichkov was oh, exceptional. We've just seen well. him again, yeah. just the way, oh, and given that he's up and down that left-hand side, wow. boom, boom, boom. But it was great to see that Alan Hutton up yeah, again. It yeah. must have been a real, a real pleasure for Alan to play against that. I tell you what he can't do. Stoichkov. 
What? You can't skip. There's, there's a great bit of footage. <laughs> yeah. There's a great bit of footage of him <laughs> and Johan Cruyff. And you know you, you're the skipper and hey, they do the crossover? Hey. Oh, get on it. Get on it. You've got to see it, mate. He cannot skip. It was gold. It really was. What a player, though, as well. Oh. Football. Amazing players. It's great to, to remember them, especially when we saw, and not just Jude Bellingham last night, but so many great players. And let's not forget for Scotland. I mean, if we told you a year ago that uh, on September the 13th we'd be sitting with 15 points from five games, you would say you're having a laugh. No chance. Yeah. I genuinely would have said yeah. absolutely no chance. Yes. Champions League is round the corner, so too is Europa League. Uh, Rangers will play Real Betis uh, next week, the 21st, then Aris Limassol um, on the 5th of October. Celtic have Feyenoord in the De Coupe Stadium. I noticed you saying that. People love saying that in the Eredivisie. <laughs> Big John Harson, who's here tomorrow night, he loves in the Eredivisie. Yeah. I know he says it nothing like that, but he will be on with Leanne Crichton uh, tomorrow night, 5 Brilliant. till 7. And then match day 2 for Celtic. That looks to me like Lazio. So it's going to be absolutely phenomenal, the Champions League and the Europa League. Uh, we've been speaking to, well, hearing from Nat Phillips today, the Liverpool loanee for a season. Uh, yeah, I mean, he's thinking, coming to Celtic, Champions League football, I'll have some of that. Really exciting. Um, I think, you know, Champions League is probably the pinnacle of football for a lot of players. Um, so, like I say, it's a great opportunity to be involved in that as well. I've loved every time that I have been out on the pitch in the Champions League, it's obviously that next level um, competing against the biggest and best in Europe. It's obviously highly competitive, but at the same time, I know that at Liverpool, those Champions League nights have a reputation for being special and I've heard it's the same at Celtic, so I'm looking forward to experiencing that. And I guess that is why he joined Celtic for you know, not just that, you know, the league a campaign to come, but the Champions League. I've gone through a period at Liverpool um, where I've not been playing a great deal and ultimately in the transfer window I knew that I needed to get playing games regularly somewhere and Celtic has given me a great opportunity to, to do that at a good level and at a huge club, uh, one with you know a stadium that's always packed full of passionate fans which as a player that's what you want to be doing, you want to be playing in, front, in those atmospheres and at a club who have aspirations and high expectations um, which again as a player you want to be pushing towards um, big end goals and that's something that Celtic gives me. Craig, game time is the one thing that you really need and as the clock goes down in your career, it's a short career, yeah. so you can hear he's desperate to play this season. Yeah, no, look, again, just someone that um, has the qualities um, and now has an opportunity to get back in um, and, and to show exactly what he can do. Um, like I said, I mean, Celtic were very clear about wanting someone that had to come in with experience. That project chat had gone, hadn't it? In, in terms of players coming in to, to really impact uh, the team to make sure that they, they had someone now that was able to help them progress just while they were going through. <laughs> the, the, so you know the, why I've busted out laughing? What, what? James is, I'm so sorry. <laughs> James has just said as you've just seen it. <laughs> Stoichkov trying to skip. You need to look at it, everyone. Just go online oh, as you're listening to this. <laughs> <laughs> And Croy trying to show him how oh, to so skip. Yeah, no, he can he yeah. skip, but he can play. Oh, no, the unbelievable player, but I've oh, seen it that many times. That's funny. Yeah, Absolute it's, it's gold. a great clip. A great yeah? clip. <laughs> oh, so anyway, yeah. So, so we're talking about, about Phillips? Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. we are. Mate, he'll, he'll, he'll be fine. Great experience. But I'm glad you like that, Paul. <laughs> I'm glad you like I've seen it a number of times. I'll take the fine for that one. Totally unprofessional. But uh, <laughs> let him go online then and look at it. It's hilarious. <laughs> um, so, Nat Phillips at Celtic so Navrovsky that's not good news though for Celtic he's out for quite a few couple of months yeah, so he's, yeah. not, he's not in the Champions okay. League so they yep. obviously feel that Carter Vickers will be back before him and with the greatest of respect to Navrovsky you, you would rather have that because you know what you're getting with Carter Vickers he's a leader he's a proper defender and if he's back maybe for, for the last three games of the section Paul that'd be a big big boost for Celtic and Mark a different Mark's asking what about uh, Burnaby what does it tell us that he's not in the squad it's, it's not quite worked out for him nah, look, it, Paul yeah. for me he's not, he's not good enough right. you know, okay. he, he, he yeah. shouldn't be um, at the club but it's uh, you know, what is it three and a half million quid cost doesn't look that that kind of a uh, player so you need to you need to um, upgrade in that in that area of the pitch Huge couple of weeks coming up and we'll be here every single night building up to it. Quick thoughts of this weekend because we mm -hmm. won't think uh, hear from either of you yep. before then. Uh, Motherwell St Mirren, did you give us a, a verdict on that one? What do you think, Craig? Who's going to be the winner? Uh, I'm going to go St Mirren to, to again yep. mm -hmm. uh, keep their run going. Tight 1-0. OK, Mark, on that one? 1-1. One, 1-1. One. One, one. Kelly Hibbs that you're going to, so 
Nick Montgomery's first game in charge up against uh, Derek McInnes Kilmarnock yeah, yeah we're really looking forward to that game yeah. 2-1 Kilmarnock 2-1 Kelly right okay mm. what do you think going to go a Hibs win Hibs win. win Montgomery to get off to winning ways and then they're coming to Gypsy Bray in Edinburgh they're going to do the We Wonder of over 300 uh, supporters who are going okay. to be for their community trust so that's good news that's on Sunday Hearts Aberdeen so yeah who wants to take that one I think both of them need the win Ooh, they yeah. both do don't they which, yeah, which, norm- yeah. which normally badly. means a draw a draw yeah uh, I'm going to go Aberdeen to win 1-0 OK mm. Ross County Livingston Craig coming to you first then. OK Ross County yeah. Livingston I am going to go with Ross County home win against a, a very very hard uh, mm. Livingston to play against 2-1 two 2-1 one. Two one. yep Desmond 2-2 two two. the 2-2 two two. and uh, Celtic against Dundee Mark. Celtic by two goals by two goals yeah, yeah. yeah. three one 3-1 yeah because yeah. it was such a big win for them for, and for Brendan Rodgers Mark that was a big one wasn't it because some oh. of the fans you remember you know after the yeah, St. Johnson to, to, game to beat Rangers under, under any circumstance yeah. Paul of course is but in the opening old firm game of the season at Ibrox against 50,000 Rangers supporters and also given the fact that you, you've got a starting 11 that you, you know in your wildest dreams you could never imagine would have been uh, the case so um, but again for me just shows he's, he's an exceptional um, manager absolutely exceptional at that level and the early kick off the 12.30 has got to be the Sky game isn't it yeah. uh, will we see you on Sky are you doing it for them no. you, you'll be there though maybe at the game yeah I would yeah. like to yeah, potentially be at the game what do you think What's I, the score I think like? it's going to be a real tough match for Rangers but they've just got to find a way to win uh, St Johnson I think on the back of a couple of draws I'm going to go for a 1-0 win to Rangers 1-0 yeah because I think it'll yeah. be tight okay. I think it'll be right. tight That will. they need to get over the line mm-hmm. I don't like to see people lose jobs. I would like to see Michael Beale still have time to, to get this team playing, but it's going to be a tough match. I agree with that scoreline as well. 1-0 Rangers. Nervy 90 minutes, but they'll get the job done. OK, that's just about it from us. It has been a, a great campaign so far for Scotland. OK, not the result we wanted last night. Been a great show. <laughs> well, I, well, we're always honest on this one. <laughs> Listen, it was wrong last oh. night, guys, so you didn't, you didn't have the talk to work with. No, listen, thanks so much. we hear from you next week. Cheers, Mark. Cheers, Paul. Uh, you're sacked. <laughs> <laughs> Not in my gift. Um, and Craig, thanks so much. Cheers, Paul. See you next week. Tomorrow night, John Hartson will be here with Leanne Crichton with me at five. The news is next. The Go Radio Football Show with Global Eco Energy, a tailored service where each code is created with the best products and a fair price, no upfront costs. Let's go! Looking to reduce your energy bills? Global Eco Energy install renewable energy products to domestic, commercial, and public sector customers with a wide range of renewable energy products, including solar PV, battery storage, and air source heat pumps. We offer bespoke solutions. For a free quote and to find out more about grants and funding options, go to global-eco.co.uk and quote Solar 10 for 10% off your installation. Available until 30th September 2023.